so welcome back to my channel hello everyone in this video we will try to learn about the deep concept we are learning about the diving deep into the server side rendering right and the ssr environment in angular and we are learning so in this video we will try to learn about the special tokens provided by the angular core package for interacting with the ssr environment so these tokens what it will try to do it will try to give you the access to the critical request and response information enabling you to enhance your server rendered angular applications these things so we will explore about the three tokens that is nothing but request request underscore init and also the request underscore context tokens i will try to explain you in detail with these practical examples using the angular 19 standalone components let's try to uh, dive deep into this one so let's try to open one specific file so here i will explain you with some simple example what are those three tokens so here in angular Actually, server-side rendering allows you to pre-render your app on the server before sending it to the browser. Angular provides three key tokens in the Angular core package to interact with the SSR environment. So what are those three key tokens? One is the request. So this gives access to the current HTTP request object. With this, you can access the headers, cookies and also the other details also. So response underscore init. And also it enables you to set headers and status code dynamically in the server response and here request context so it will provide you some additional context about the current request for custom handling and here these two uh, so now these these three are the main things so provides additional context to this one so these tokens make it easy to create applications that rely on the server specific data during rendering but remember these tokens are available only in the server during SSR and will be null on the client side rendering or static side generation. So you need to understand this one. So this one is all available when it is server side rendered only, when it is doing server side render. So let's try to do a simple example. I will try to show you a simple example. So just I will explain you. So how these requests will be and all those things. Let's go to the app.component.ts file. So this is our app.component.ts file, right? So let's say that in the constructor. Okay. So we will inject the request. So here in our constructor, here I am injecting the request. So here request the first token. So I will be injecting inject. <coughs> Let's try to inject this one. And here I can use request. Sorry, it should be something like request. Okay. So this is the request. It should be available in the Angular core. And here inject also it should be available in the Angular core. So here I have imported the inject and also the request. This is a token available in the Angular core package. Remember that this will work only in the server side only. So now here, what I will be trying to do if request is available means, okay, then what I will try to do, I will try to console dot log of request. Okay. So I will console the request here. And if it is not available means then I will tell that something like console dot log no request object available. That's it. So this is our simple thing. So I am injecting the request and I am trying to check what are the what is the data we are getting from the request. And here I will build the code and here I will stop it the server. So when I am trying to build the code, so it will build and this request. So whenever you are trying to when the uh, data is coming. So for example, let's say that here we are having in you know, our app.routes.server.ts file, right? So when you are having a home page, so it is rendering through the server side, right? So when you are uh, home page means then you will be able to see this app.component.ts means it will execute all the time so you'll be able to see a request object so when you're trying to go to the contact or something like that means then you will not able to see why because it is rendering mode is client and also this one is pre-render let's try to see it is taking some time to build it let it take it build it so now it has been built successfully let's try to open our code and here in our home page and app.component.ts file so i am refreshing this page now you are able to see that no request object is available okay and if you go into this one so here you will be able to see this all the request address we are able to see right the request object which we are able to get it the method is going to get and all those things we are able to get it so here we are able to get this one so whatever the thing you are having in the server side so we are able to get the request object also so in the server side you can do it you can use this one all now if you try to uh, check it here so for example uh, if i go into here the request and if i go back uh, to the contact page and uh, if i come back here into this one so we are not able to get it but here if i try to refresh this page again now here in our uh, 
what I mean to say here in this one. So here again we are able to get this request object. See again we are able to get this request object. So for example, let's say that uh, the contact page. So I am in the contact page. So this one is client side redundant. Okay, that's why we are not able to get the request object. Now if I try to refresh this page here. So let's see <coughs> whether we can able to get it or not. So here the, there is no option so to get it. So here this is not, uh, so the previous one only it is working. Now here if you try to check it here, so the no request object available we are able to see here in this one. So why because this is client side so we are not able to see but whereas in the server side we are, we are able to see the request object also. So this all the request and all those things will be rendered. Uh, see, we'll be logged in the the UR, uh, the request and all the things in, you know, when the app is rendering in the server. So here, when the app is rendering in the server, so we are able to see this one. So that is what I want to explain you. So this is all about the uh, request object. So now, if you if you want to get all the request address and all those things, if you want to do some manipulations and all those things, means so you can do it here. So that is one thing. So this is this is one this is one about the request thing, and we have another one that is nothing but response underscore init. So let's use this response underscore in it to token to dynamically set the response address, update the code. Uh, so we'll update the code like this. So here we are, uh, so we will set a custom header, something like that uh, and the response status 200. So here for this one, what we need to do. So for the same thing, I will try to use the response underscore in it. Okay. And here you will be having the response. So now you will be able to see the clear understanding for this one also. So now we are trying to set the headers. So now here if response is there means, so for example, if response is there means, so here you can directly set the headers for this one response, response dot headers, okay, is, is equal to, so just custom and we can add our custom domain or something like that. We can add some text yeah, here. And also if you want to set the status means you can also set the status response dot status is equal to 200 so you can use it something like this and here you can use something like no response object is available these are we are doing it for the in that when it is uh, then the app is rendering in the server side so now we are trying to send from the through the server the response address also so the same home page if you are trying to access from the server side means if you refresh this page okay oh, oh, sorry so now here we need to build it this one sorry i forgot so we need to build this one let it build so now here, if I am trying to refresh this page, so you will be able to see this entire text you are able to see it. Why? Because so we have changed the response headers. So now if you try to go here and if you check in the all and in this local host, which you are trying to do it and the response headers, which we are trying to send it. So here we have sent our custom domain and here it is sending the content type as text slash plain instead of text slash HTML. Let's try to update this one also. Let's see whether we it, it will update it or not. So I never tried it. So these things is just I'm trying to show you how you can uh, update these all the things. So content type is equal to text slash HTML. Okay, let's see. So I am setting these custom headers and let's see this one. I am building again this one and I will stop this node server. So now we have started, we have built it and we have started. So let's try to see the same output. So now if I try to check the same output. So let's try to see now we are able to get it why because so now i have changed this response to content type to text slash html and custom my custom domain also we are sending this response headers so that means when you want to send some response headers to this one also so by using this response underscore in it you can set the headers and you can set the status and all those things also you can set it let's try to see that whether we can able to get this so we need to build it and we need to check it so just i want to explain you how this response headers and all those things from the server if you want to change it means how you can change it and we also have an another one that is nothing but request underscore context. So this one is an same like a request uh, token only it will be. But the difference between this request and the request underscore context is. So normally this one is different. So when you are working on devices and all those things, if you want some extra request data, so which could not be sent by the standard web API methods through the HTTP which is not sent means. So those type of things you can capture it through the request underscore context. So right now we are up, we are uh, using only the a uh, web based thing only so that's why we are not able to check this request underscore context normally i am trying to tell you that when you are trying to work in any devices or anything and you want to get any extra request uh, request headers so if any data is sending uh, that is uh, corresponding to the device or any application when you are trying to run it so there you if you want to use it means so then this request underscore context will send you the additional headers and all those request data which could not be sent through the http or the standard web api 
so these are all the different ways of uh, uh, tokens which are available in the angular server so for checking this one so what are these things so before we wrap up here are some important points to remember so these tokens like request request underscore init and also request underscore context are only available during ssr and it will return null in the client side running so that is one thing you need to understand they enable dynamic server side behaviors like customizing header status codes and also handling request specific information so if you want to handle request specific information means so they will handle use these tools to create seamless server rendered applications so that's it today for today's video guys if you found this helpful please like and subscribe for more angular content let me know in the comments if you have any questions or topics i would do you would like me to cover so thanks for watching and i will see you in the next one bye guys